So I've been told that I've got shoulder pain because I've got an excessively curved upper back. Now, this is called thoracic kyphosis, and being curved here sort of does make a little bit of sense theoretically in why someone might have shoulder issues. Certainly, it's something that, you know, evidence shows that if you mobilize the thoracic spine, that actually this may well help people with shoulder pain. But are you affecting uh, changes to their curvature, or are you inf inflicting more of a neurological change to how they perceive pain? And what this we're going to look at today is to see if there is actually any so there's a correlation effectively between the curvature, excessive uh, thoracic kyphosis to shoulder pain and also shoulder range of motion to see if that actually is, uh, is actually a thing. So this was a systematic review of 10 studies where they looked at the relationship between excessive kyphosis of your thoracic spine, so the curvature in there, and shoulder pain. Now it has to be said that six of the studies were found to have a moderate to high risk of bias, so we've got to take that into account, but that doesn't necessarily mean it did have bias as such. So what did they find? So overall they found moderate evidence to show that there was actually no relationship between excessive kyphosis of your thoracic spine and shoulder pain. So this kind of belief behind, oh you've got shoulder pain because you're curved in your thoracic spine, um, may well not be true based on this systematic review. And I suppose it's all about adaptability of the body. If someone's got more curvature naturally, they've got more curvature naturally, does that mean they will get shoulder pain? Not necessarily. It could be a risk factor, but I think it depends on various factors. Again, we are always looking in research at these very, uh, you know, sort of in a vacuum environments where you're comparing one thing versus another, but obviously there's so many of the variables around this type of thing. Now they also looked at their range of motion and what they did find here was that there was a relationship here. So if someone had a straighter mid-back thoracic spine, less kyphosis, they had better shoulder range of motion. And this just makes mechanical sense at the end of the day. If you do this to yourself right now, when you actually curve your spine and lift your arm up, you won't get as high as if you lift your chest and lift your arm up. It just naturally is that way. And that's because obviously your shoulder blade, which obviously is what affixes to your humerus, which make, makes you glean your humeral joint shoulder joints, is sitting on your rib cage. And if you curve the spine, you're gonna fit it onto a different positioning to start with, and that's gonna give you an overall difference in range of motion. Does that mean the range of motion is, lim is different at the shoulder joints? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's what you lock on a person outwardly with a goniometer, but if you actually account for the angle in the glenohumeral joints, I would assume that it's probably no different. Um, and therefore, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. In fact, I would say that there is a chance if someone's doing a lot of overhead work um, and they have a excessive kyphosis, their shoulder probably moves better than... A normal person's does because they've got to get higher up with that already forward forward tilted uh, uh, scapula which means they need even greater range in the actual joint itself that doesn't mean they're going to get pain though it depends if there's been a, an abrupt change to that type of work or whatever else so it's not as simple as that causes that and certainly the range of motion even here is a little bit debatable. Certainly if you look at it based on a textbook example of measuring it, I think you're gonna see it's down in the joint itself on the joint surfaces in the sense of the glenoid to the humeral head. I think you're gonna see probably the same range, maybe better based on the functional need to get your arms higher in certain people's functional activities. But it does show you that if you have someone who has pain in their shoulder, then the kyphosis probably isn't necessarily relevant in itself, in isolation. However, if someone's got lack of range of motion or functional loss of where they need to get to, then it may well be something to target with some thoracic extension, so as a mobility work, to encourage that range of motion in that mid-back to improve, which gives them a, a basically a higher position of their arm, even if it's not the joint itself that's getting that from. It still works all together as a unit, the body does, so if you have some limitations here, it's gonna give you limitations up here, and therefore something worth targeting if someone has a restriction that they require. So if someone's in the gym and they're trying to do overhead kind of pressing or overhead work, um, then it's important to make sure that they have that 
that ability to go vertical. And if they're doing powerlifting type stuff where they need to really get back there, they need even better thoracic mobility as well. So it's not a one size fits all rule. So it shows you overall correlation to pain, not so much, possibly in individual cases. Um, in terms of range, yes, but not quite as you think, but certainly functionally, yes, it does make a difference. Anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.